Anyways, so I already tried recording this video before. It's just gonna be like a book review of all the books that I read this year, but I was just reading verbatim from my book journal and I don't think I like that. I don't think I like how that video came out. So instead, I'm just gonna try and talk about the books from what I remember. And I have a horrible memory, which is why I'm keeping the book journal. I'm not gonna rate them because I'm not good at rating things like reflectively because my thoughts change. So I can't say exactly how I thought like would have rated it. But honestly, you should read all books because who am I to tell you what you should and shouldn't read? You know what I mean? Now, let me just show you my book journal. This is it, just filled with random stickers that I got throughout. I don't know, just live. Originally started keeping a book journal because I saw some posts online, but this person was like, there was collages, there was details, it was more bullet journal-esque, and I'm not creative like that. I also don't have the time, nor do I read enough to be that dedicated to it. I've only read, I think, I don't know, 13 books this year, and one of them, like, I started in 2022 and finished. I'm also a really slow reader. Pretty much everything that's in each page of the book journal, I'll just type up and put on screen. Yeah, let's get started with the books that I've read this year. I started this year finishing the book Memoirs of a Geisha. First and foremost, I need to preface that I read this book thinking it was a literal fucking memoir. Didn't know that it was a super famous book. I didn't know that there's a movie. I think there's a movie. And I have a couple books that I read throughout this year that my older sister had given to me. All of them are hardcovers, but they don't have the like paper cover over it. So I had no idea what these books were about or any synopsis. And so I was just doing blind dates with books a lot this year, which was really fun for me. Even if I did see the cover of some books, I just wasn't reading the back. I was just like, let me just read. Pros and cons, obviously, because you never know like whether you're going to like the book. But this was one of those blind dates with a book. And I really liked it. And I really felt so strong and visceral with it. And my little annotations in the books, which aren't real annotations. Again, I have to preface. I am not a book person person well I love reading but I'm a slow reader my annotations are super intellectual or in-depth or deep it's just like what I say out loud to myself or my predictions of what will happen I just want to write it down in case someone else reads the book after me or in case I reread the book and my thoughts change and those kinds of things just for myself to have thought this book was real until so close to the end I had such like raw feelings for this because I was like I can't believe this shit is really happening and it could be loosely based on a plethora of different true stories and I'm sure shit like this did happen for people but I really was not reading it as a fiction <laughs> and so that skewed a lot of my perspective and also didn't allow me to be as critical when reading but I did really like the book I thought the writing was done very well I thought it was beautifully written knowing that it is not real though I probably should look into like the authors like was it just some random white man that wrote this book Hold on. Now that I'm looking at the author. <laughs> hmm. Is this problematic for me to read? Because I ate this book up. The next book I read was a poetry book that Bart got me for Secret Santa. It's called When My Body Was a Clenched Fist and it has a written little blurb from the author so that was really cool and it was a really interesting piece. It was really well written. I learned a lot of new vocabulary. I didn't know a lot of the words so I had to reread, look some things up so I would love to reread it all just with more understanding of it but still the perspective it was telling just of how your body holds your stress, your tension. It's just beautiful. Would recommend for a thought-provoking read. Then I read We Have Always Lived in a Castle, which is Shirley Jackson, who wrote the short story The Lottery that I thought everyone was forced to read in high school. And then I found out that no, they weren't. But I feel like a large amount of people have read The Lottery. I've loved it. So just more of Shirley Jackson's writing is great. And then in the afterword of this book, the author of the afterword goes into depth about Shirley Jackson's experiences and prefaces how her lived experience influenced her writing so that was also really great to read so yeah would recommend i'm probably gonna say would recommend for every single book i'll be so honest the next book i read this was a book i got from book of the month for christmas i think of last year jenny had bought me a like free book trial this was the first one that i used for the book of the month subscription this was an interesting book it was fun it had an interesting plot but i did not like the main character do I remember why? Not really. Do I see that in my notes right now? Yes. Oh, it says she was impulsive and selfish to a fault. 
So there's that. Not all main characters have to be likable because I do remember enjoying reading it. So I would recommend. It also led me to be like, okay, I will try out more book of the month books. The next book I read was Thoughts by Jenny which is just a journal that Jenny got me for my birthday from October 18th, 2022 until April 12th, 2023. It was just a bunch of journal entries that she wrote, seeing her thoughts, which is like a shared experience for us about our journals that I don't need to talk about. It doesn't really matter. That's our business. She also put a bunch of prompts in the back that I still have not revisited to this day. Would not recommend. No, y'all can't fucking read it. The next book I read was... And Then You're Dead by Cody Cassidy and Paul Doherty. This was a really fun book. Interesting. Before the actual writing, they said it was like Stephen King meets Stephen Hawking. And the book is just talking about what would actually happen if you did this very specific obscure thing. Like if you were swallowed by a whale, if you were shot from a cannon, if you went into a black hole, those kinds of things. So it told you what would actually happen or what's theorized to actually happen. Some things had experiences of people that went through X, Y, and Z or something similar that lived through it, that survived it, some didn't. So it was just interesting. It was a fun read. The next book I read was Where the Crawdad Sing and I would not recommend. I do not like this book. One of my main qualms, the main character's like woe is me attitude, which is so valid in life, in people, and whatever like if horrible shit happened to you you are entitled to be upset by it people are like oh, you shouldn't have a victim mindset if you're a victim that's your mindset you know what i mean like you can't control that well you can like there's different ways to manage but like you're allowed to be upset by things and if it's altering sometimes that's just mental illness sometimes you can't even fucking control it sometimes you're just debilitatingly depressed like you know but in this book there are certain things where the character would say that she's alone and she has nothing and these other characters that are constantly like helping her catering to her like providing for her and offered her more but she didn't take it which were these black characters and it felt like their blackness was also used as like a plot point and not like it just felt like just an aspect of the setting and was used for the main character's character development as opposed to just being a larger plot in the book or having more front-facing need or necessity for it or just letting it be something nonchalant like those are my two feelings about like if you're going to talk about the black experience in a piece of work it either has to be like not brought up or like brought up casually like this is just someone's experience it has to feel real or it has to be the main theme you can't just pick and choose random points to help elevate your story especially if the main lead is a white person or a non-black person of color but I also feel like in general if you're going to use a person of color these same things apply you can't just use other people's identities as plot devices and plot points as to raise a white character's story that's fucking weird to me that's a pet peeve of mine sometimes it can be done well I guess but I don't really see that happening never say never but that's my personal one of my personal pet peeves I also didn't like the like emphasis on the main girl's purity among the different love interests but it did have an interesting plot and some fun twists but the ending of the story felt really rushed i don't know i just didn't like it and i think it was also because so many people would hi were hyping it up and then every time i was reading it people were like oh, i love the movie but i hadn't actually read the book and i never saw the movie either so i'm wondering like if I saw the movie first and read the book, maybe I'd enjoy it more. Maybe I would play it in a different perspective. Or if nobody had ever talked and hyped this book up, maybe I wouldn't have been as critical or as expectant when reading this book. Wouldn't recommend, but if you read it, like, you might like it. I don't know. So the next book I read was Hang the Moon. This was another book of the month pick that I took. And it was such a huge debate because there were so many good books that piqued my interest for this month i'm pretty sure great follow-up to where the crawdads sing because i enjoyed reading it a lot more i enjoyed the writing itself a lot more though there was still an aspect where it felt like black tragedy was used as a plot device that i was like okay and i was oftentimes in disagreement with the main character but it's another example where like 
you don't have to like the main character to enjoy the book and I did enjoy the book I do think it was good and I remember what made me realize like oh I'm gonna pick this book is that I went to a bookstore I can't remember which one not that it really matters but I went to a bookstore and someone was talking about other books by this author Jeanette Walls and it was right when I was trying to pick and then there's other book of the month books that were in this bookstore so I was like oh my gosh this feels like a sign then I read last night at the Telegraph Club I really didn't say recommend it was really good it was really interesting loved the writing I randomly found this book outside of a dorm room during move out so another blind date with the book I think it was really well written I think it put a lot of work in to make it accurate and it seemed like it was well researched and the way the writing was it allowed for a deep immersion pardon if you see a moth flying around there's a moth in my room definitely a good read if you want something sapphic if you want something with more asian american representation if you want to see something that shows just the lgbtq at earlier stages in america and how you could exist with that you know it has a lot of interesting representation in it and it was good it was also just well written so that was nice then i read i'm glad my mom died i borrowed from jenny it was beautiful it, like it was so well written it was so jarring because you are reading it it feels like what what did i write it was written so clearly we were inside Jeanette's head not just listening to her relay the words and stories of her past i felt like we were at the moment seeing her thoughts seeing it from her perspective and not just hearing her perspective which i really enjoyed and it i think can be a difficult thing to a difficult experience to express in writing to have it actually be i don't know i feel like it's hard to portray your thoughts as they are in a raw way and then allow other people to read it that feels crazy to me but it was really good it was really interesting it also helped show the nuance of her relationship with her mother really well not just like a strict villainization or a strict this that and the third which us as the readers or us as an audience us as people that are just third parties that are involved in the direct interactions and stories we can remove ourselves and judge harshly or put our assumptions about this woman but this woman is her mother and it's just really just like so raw so real so crazy and a lot of my co-workers were, were recommending the audiobook to me and they said that she herself Jeanette reads it and it's kind of like stated matter-of-factly or so and I do not know if I could listen to that because I think it would wreck me <laughs> as something just stating their dramas is just fact you're just like yeah this happened I'm like Whoa! I couldn't deal I'm currently editing right now and I realized I forgot a fucking book. The Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. I started this book in 2020. I had posted on my Snapchat story or something like, hey, book recommendations. This person swiped up and recommended this book. And I was like, okay, so I started reading it online with the internet archive, but then I lost my place somehow. Something messed up. I couldn't continue reading the book. Plus, I was getting nauseous reading it online. I would much rather read on a physical book. So I paused. I like didn't read it for another two, three years. I ended up buying it, the hard copy, I think last year. And then I got around to continuing reading it this year maybe September. I started from the page number I could remember, which was like 195, but that wasn't actually where I was in the book. Like I was so off. I did end up finishing reading this book and I did like it. It was a bit more harrowing and anxiety inducing than I was expecting it to be. I wanted to hear things like I love science. I love learning about the world. I love having answers to things. I love having questions and and feeding my curiosity and it's kind of exciting when other people are curious about things as well this was like giving explanations for a lot of it so that was really interesting but I was hoping for more of a perspective where it's like the world is so amazing it's so interesting that these things are happening as we are doing it and it's more like negative and some of it is like difficult things to grasp ideas to grasp when thinking about it but I, I feel like it just could have been written with a different perspective that was less harrowing but it still was really good you learn a lot and it's a lot more fun to read than a typical textbook but if you are prone to anxiety or just easily stressed or nervous don't read the book next i read the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood this was a really quick read for me i think it's because i 
dedicated so much direct time to reading it. Usually when I've been reading throughout this year, I can't say usually, but a good chunk of it for a couple of months, I was just reading during my breaks at work. But for this book, I just sat down and read it and I was eating this shit up. It's got so much just like tropey, predictable romance and I love that shit. A comfort read. I enjoyed it. An enjoyable read. I also realized that for some reason I find it extremely embarrassing to read romance in public or at least at work. I don't know why like I felt like they would take me less seriously if that's what I was reading. Wish I could just read at work and nobody would ask me what I'm reading. I don't know what their views are, what their thoughts are. So reading sapphic stories reading queer stories reading stories that would expose my views stresses me out because i don't want them to know where i stand on anything just like i don't really want to know for them because i'm not interacting with them outside of the workplace anything that could interfere with how i view them and skew our ability to work together i don't want to fucking know next book i read was suspect I thought this was going to be like your typical crime book, crime mystery novel, and I was fooled because the first fucking chapter, the first part of the book was from a dog's perspective, and I was like, okay, wasn't expecting that. And certain things I was able to predict, but I did enjoy reading the story. It was a fun read. I can't even lie. There were some more of my like writing pet peeves that were in here. Like I hate when people write in phonetically accents instead of just saying like oh they had a strong jamaican accent they'll put like wagwan and like spell it like weird they wouldn't even spell it in the way that someone who speaks patois would fucking spell it they spell it their own made up fucking way and then i'm trying to read it and i'm like that's not how they sound and it also makes it super difficult to fucking read like you can't fluidly read and maybe it's just because i have my own issues with accents in general like when i like i can't hear accents before i say issues with accents that sounds fucking problematic hold on hold on put the pitchforks down and let me explain i have noticed in recent years that i like don't notice as much when people have accents or i'll forget that people have accents and that's also why i can't really do accents i try and think i'm like well how are they saying it? i'm like they're saying it just like i'm saying it like there's no difference they're saying the same thing you know what i mean so i just can't grasp accents as a concept so writing something different phonetically in the book i'm like they're still saying the same fucking words it's just sitting in their mouth different like don't do that especially if it's bad especially if i know that i'm like that's not how they fucking talk which happened in this book and there also was like a comparing like melanin to food and they're like with their with this chocolate skin i'm like shut up you weirdo don't fucking say that but it still was i still like the book <laughs> pardon the whole rant later the next book I tried to start reading was Ordinary Light. This is another book that I found outside of a random dorm room. I started it and put it down that same day, not as in finishing it. I just, I wasn't in the mindset to read something that so heavily seemed to have a focus on religion. I didn't know if it was a religious book or if it was supposed to be or if that was just an underlying theme throughout the book or not, but I was like, I do not want to read that right now and then i lost the book so it must be a sign that i'm not supposed to read it but maybe if it comes back falls back into my lap at some point um it'll be the right time for me to read it then the book i'm currently reading is charity and sylvia a same-sex marriage in early america this was a book that i was gifted by jc a couple years ago when they were cleaning out their dorm bookshelf i was like yeah i'll take some of these of course i'll take some of these books and so far it's been fun i'm really really early in the book i think i have it right here so as i was doing that my phone also ran out of storage but i grabbed the book i am only on page 28 or 29 i'm not exactly sure so i'm really really early in this book if you can't tell it's just made me realize that historians are just gossipers and i love that no i'm just kidding but it did make me laugh reading the oh there's a family tree that's nice that's so convenient the preface where the author is talking about like the research that went in everyone wanted to know where these bitches fucking that's not what the author writes verbatim you know that's not exactly what she says the author prefaces the book with explanation of all the work that went in researching their old letters the letters of their loved ones the writings the journals anything they can find to try and piece together their history so i'm excited for this retelling to hear their stories of how they lived and how they loved 
but it just makes me laugh that they're like, what we really want to know is, were they having sex? Historians want to know. I'm like, y'all nosy as fuck. Like, what? why do you want to know so much? I just want to read more nonfiction in general. That's all the books that I have read or attempted to read this year. Maybe I'll finish this one before January, but I hope you enjoyed. I know this isn't super fun. It's not exactly booktuber because I don't read enough and also I am not knowledgeable enough about the book community or authors or all that stuff, but you know, I just want to check it for myself about the books I've read and getting back into reading and rekindling a love I once lost by reading. Maybe you were just on your own book journal to start keeping track. Maybe you're having your own fun with how you note the books you've read and can share with others and how you annotate. But if you liked the video, like the video. If you didn't like it, dislike it. If you have something to say, comment down below. If you would like to see more of my videos or want me to pop up more in your feed, you can subscribe. If you don't want to interact with me ever again, hope that I never pop up for you to see. <laughs> Hopefully you can click uninterested or don't recommend so you don't see my stuff anymore but if you don't mind you know maybe i will show up a little bit more who knows who cares hopefully you don't feel obligated to interact with this post i'm sure that you don't because you owe me nothing i owe you nothing we just happen to be two people on either sides of the screen that just happened upon to interact in life at the same time but not actually but kind of because time is a flat circle but you get it you get it or you don't and that's okay Let's